Hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in Goldmaking, presented by Dark Shore Capital. It is August 6th, 2018. Let's take a look at the market update for the week. As you'll notice, there's quite a bit of red numbers on the screen. And I think it's really no surprise uh, Legion is coming to a close. Legion materials are dropping in price because people aren't too interested in crafting Legion goods at this point. Now, that said, I think that now is potentially a very good time if you're interested in adding Legion crafted gear to your transmog crafting portfolio in the future, which I think is absolutely going to be relevant and a good long-term investment. Uh, maybe consider picking up some stuff for cheap now. It's interesting because although the current expansion, once it goes to the next expansion, is no longer like relevant content, the price of these raw materials actually tends to go up over time. And the reason for that is nobody's out farming fell slate. Nobody's out farming stone hide leather. Like there's no reason to be doing that for like a mass uh, market. So the the price goes up because there's less people farming it. So if you want to get it and cheap it now, if you have a lot of cash to spare going into the expansion, which uh, maybe you shouldn't, maybe there's, maybe there's better places to use that. Maybe there isn't. I don't know if that's really up to you. Maybe a time to consider investing in some long-term, say, shelter I soak for tailor and crafted goods or potentially some fell slate for some blacksmithing stuff. We'll also note the WoW token prices on both EU and NA have been on a steady decline for the past week or two. Uh, there's really never a bad time to be buying WoW tokens with gold, in my opinion, but uh, they are down a little bit, so maybe even a better time. I think that the reason for them going down is likely due to returning players coming back to the game, getting ready for Battle for Azeroth, and you know maybe wanting a little bit extra gold to play around with. And they'd rather just spend the $15, get the gold from the token. And the more people that do that, the lower the price goes. That's how it works. Uh, last thing to note, ATVI, Activision Blizzard, down for the week. I don't know, stock market's kind of easy right now. We're not going to go into it. It's pretty sparse news week. Uh, the only one item I did want to bring up was a Reddit post made by Shayra about her transmog operations, which have been updated. I would highly recommend checking this out because it's very long and looks very detailed. I personally haven't read it yet, and I'm planning to, but uh, she knows what she's doing, and this is good stuff. I can guarantee it. We're going to do things a little bit out of order this week, and you'll see why in just a moment. So we'll get started with some Q&A. First question I have here is, what is the most effective way of determining a server's economy? And my answer to that is, there really isn't an answer to that because, uh, and I don't mean to be rude to the person who asked this, it's not a very well-formed question because I don't, I don't really know what's being asked. Um, a server's economy, that, that means a whole lot of different things. It could mean a whole bunch of different things. So without being specific about um, how to determine you know, like how deep is the market for Legion crafted goods? Like how many people are wanting them? How many people are selling them? Things like that. Getting a little more specific, then we can start having a conversation. But when you just kind of say generally like the server's economy in quotes, I don't, I don't know how to interpret that. And what am I determining? I, I'm not sure what I'm trying to determine just based on this question. So I, I just wanted to include this as an example of, I guess, of what not to do. Um, it's, an, it's very important, like there's a saying, there's no such thing as a stupid question, and that's true. However, there are questions that can be of better quality, and I think that it's important to ask good questions because if you can sort of give the person you're asking the question to some guidance on what you're sort of looking for, it'll just improve both sides of the conversation. So I, I'm certainly not trying to uh, embarrass or call anyone out on this. I just wanted to bring it up and talk about it briefly because I do think it's a very important thing to ask well-formulated questions. Next question, how do you not lose money selling items that take weeks or months to sell? Well, that's an interesting question. The uh, concept of losing money is interesting. I mean, you do lose money on Auction house fees, auction house cut. Well, the auction house cut doesn't come into play until you've actually sold the item, but uh, just the deposit that you have to put down for listing an item. So, you know, there certainly are ways to kind of reduce your costs. Um, things like if it's, well, I mean, I guess we're talking about long-term stuff here. So, I mean, you pretty much are guaranteed to be putting stuff up for 48 hours. However, uh, maybe take note of particular item types, like certain armor or weapon types will cost a lot more to post 
uh, because their vendor sell price is higher. So perhaps if those items are eating into your profits significantly, you could consider selling them other ways from the auction house, such as barking in trade chat or finding communities of interested buyers, things of that nature. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's about as much as I can really get into on that one. Uh, you're you're going to lose some money here and there, but I've found vastly overall that the, the money you do make on selling the long-term items outweighs the uh, the costs, the incremental costs of posting. Next question, is it best to keep farmers at level 110 for BFA? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not a farmer and I haven't done any testing on Battle for Azeroth beta for farming type stuff. The only information I do have to add on this point is that legendaries uh, will no longer be active past level 115. So if your farming character depends heavily on a legendary, which I know a lot of leather working, or sorry, leather and male classes do because of that crafted legendary. Uh, if the thing you're farming isn't require or doesn't require 120 to farm, then yeah, perhaps maybe keeping it 115 might be better if you'd rather fly around as an owl. Uh, that, that's really something I'll leave up to the more farm centric gold makers to answer. How much does the server you're on influence how much money you can make? While I don't feel qualified to answer this within all markets in World of Warcraft, I have started to have some experience with it regarding battle pets and current expansion BOE items. And the battle pet realm is actually kind of an interesting answer to the question because the difference in price across servers is actually how you make money selling battle pets. So the different prices across servers heavily influences how much money you can make because that's uh, that's just how you make the money uh, the, the arbitrage between buying a pet on a high population server where it is generally cheaper and then selling it on a lower population where it is generally higher priced that's how you make the money now with the boes uh, it really just comes down to kind of a supply and demand kind of thing because on lower population servers there are less people playing the game and generally significantly less raiding guilds and people just raiding in general, you're going to see a lot fewer BOE items and that's going to make the price of them much higher. So if you can acquire them for a reasonable price at a good discount, um, you can potentially make more gold. However, again, back to supply and demand, the demand is also going to be less because there's just fewer people and fewer people raiding and fewer people needing these items. So I don't really know if that really kind of is helpful or valuable in answering what this particular person was asking, but that's just what I've observed. And I believe that to be the case. And our final question for this evening is best uses for Corium or slash bars. And that's actually going to be the main topic for tonight. I thought that this was a question that could sort of kind of sink our teeth into a little bit and I could kind of maybe give you a little taste of sort of like the fundamental analysis I would do around Corium stuff, uh, both the or the bars the, and the products and how I might go about making a decision to answer this question. Because I think this question, the answer to it varies greatly on a number of factors, uh, you know, personal preference on a bunch of things, how fast you want to get your gold, uh, what are you joint doing, what do you have access to, all things of that nature. So. I'm just gonna run through it and you decide. So the first thing to do is take a look at Wowhead. Wowhead is a fantastic tool for gold making, which I think is heavily underrated. And let's just see like, what do Corium bars make? Well, first of all, you know, you, okay, you get Corium by smelting two Corium ore. That's actually good to know because if you're gonna be doing any smelting, you, you need to be, <laughs> have that factored into your math so you're not, uh, thinking that you're going to be rich because you thought it only took one. So there's a whole ton of recipes that use Corium. Now the caveat is a lot of these are bind on pickup. For example, this very first one, Breastplate of Kings, bind on pickup. You got to be very careful when you're looking at this kind of stuff because for gold making purposes, bind on pickup is just completely worthless. Now some things like this one, the coordinates of the Verdant Flame, we can take a look at and Notice that, I gotta click one more to get the right uh, Wowhead page. 
the wowhead does give you kind of like a i don't actually know have any idea where this buyout price comes from but it is sort of like a rough guesstimate on like what sort of price range you can expect to find for the item obviously you'll want to go look at something like the undermine journal or trade skill master to find an exact price for your realm or even better look at the price uh in game for the blacksmith that you can make it on uh but yeah you, you, just, you start getting kind of a sense of what these things take to make so you know like corium bars obviously that's 20 corium bars that's that's 40 corium or total primal life i know from experience that the primals are fairly difficult to obtain at a uh, cost effective price so if we're going to be dealing with a lot of primals that's something good to know talisite that's a gem that's trivial to get and i'm fairly certain your crucial atom mantite is easy to get as well it's just a uh i believe dropped from one of the raids uh but really so the other thing you kind of have to figure out here is where do these recipes come from and actually this is good because i I'm going to kind of look like a fool here because I thought this was going to be a blacksmithing recipe. Turns out this is a jewel crafting design. As we're now going to look at the jewel crafting part. Okay, so it drops out of uh, the, the Botanica, which is, of course, a Burning Crusade dungeon. So this is definitely going to be a recipe. So it says 4% here, but I believe that's actually a bit of a misnomer since um, these recipes are only going to be dropping for jewel crafters as opposed to all characters that run it so be a little higher than that i've actually farmed some of these burning crusade recipes from the dungeons and uh depending on your luck they can be tedious other times you might get lucky and you get it on the first try okay so we're starting to get a bit of an idea of what we're do dealing with here with the corium so uh you can't actually see the blacksmithing jewel crafting stuff over on the side there's some engineering stuff as well i don't know does this one bop or not that is not some of the engineering stuff you do have to be careful because it sometimes requires engineering to use. I do also know for a fact that I believe it's the is it hardened corium or is it the uh, something like a contact is also used for uh, the Jeeves, I believe it is. Anyway, it's somewhere on this planet. Also, this fell steel long blade. I know that's something of note. Uh, again, a lot of these recipes are fairly difficult to get to. So that actually brings me to my next point, which is, of course, recipe acquisition. If you don't have the recipes to make these items, then discussing what they're good to be crafted in loses a lot of its value. Like, it still is important to know because ultimately, if you're selling just the bars or just the ore, like, they're going to wind up getting crafted into these things. So it's important to know what your kind of where your place is in the, the supply chain, even if you're not following it all the way through. So the one item I have uh, access to, it looks like my thing has loaded in, let's just reopen this. The one item I have access to that has Corium in it is, that's not BOP, because these are both BOP. It's this Eternium Rune Blade, which at first glance, TSM says this is going to be a half a million gold profit. Wow. Okay. I'm very interested in this. Let's check it out. Check it out. See what we know. All right. So... First things first, uh, that million gold, half a million gold profit is probably a bit of a misnomer. It looks like somebody jacked up the market price of this item on my server uh, over time, probably. And realistically, we can expect to get somewhere in the 80 to 90,000 gold range, uh, or even 75. The historical price doesn't notice the 75,000. Uh, but still, uh, if we kind of factor that into the calculations, it says the crafting cost based on some fairly expensive primal mites and corium bars is going to be a little under 30,000 gold. We could probably bring that price down a little bit just by the fact that we can make primal mites using a transmute specialist to get some procs. And uh, potentially if we farmed some of the corium bars, which I probably wouldn't have, but if hey, if that's what you're doing to get the corium stuff, then... You can sort of factor them in as well. You can get really clever with the TSM crafting operation calculations, uh, but for the most part, I kind of let it do its thing and uh, just kind of, if it says to craft it in the mass craft, then we'll do it. Or if we're doing like this case with the Corium, right, this is a very specific, uh, not kind of automated process. So we can kind of think about it in a more uh, one-off kind of manner. Uh, the other items looks like are fairly trivial compared to the rest of the prices. Okay, so uh, for me personally, putting something up for 90,000 gold, that seems very attractive. Uh, one thing I will note that is a bit terrifying is there's actually no sell rate. And that's not a bug, because uh, I do have that uh, TSM tooltip enabled. It's just literally doesn't have the data, I guess. 
I'm sure we could probably take a look at, uh, so here's the Corian bar under my journal. Actually, I'm going to leave that up. And Turnium Rune Blade, I believe is what it was called. Turnium Rune Blade. Let's see if we can find some more data on the Undermine Journal. So US Quant, there's 35 of these total across all US realms. Man, where did I get this recipe? That's the real question. And should I have sold the recipe instead? Okay, so it does actually have some data. It looks like somebody on my realm is, has been posting it for quite a bit. That's where that uh, half a million profits coming from this i'm sure this individual has just been uh posting it with uh, a tsm operation that doesn't take into account uh very unique items um so yeah sell rates actually you can't really get sell rate information from the undermine journal what if we go to trade skill master potentially we can take a look at that blade uh quantity does it look like they have Cell rate information. Although I, I wonder if we change realms, let's just pick like Illidan because I know that Illidan's high population in the U.S. And it doesn't look like there is there as well. All right. Well, if I really wanted to get crazy, we could probably uh, like hop to a different server and try and find some some cell rate information. But for me, uh, the cell rate isn't super important when it comes to this kind of stuff because it really is kind of like a craft once twice a year and it will eventually sell kind of thing and just the more of these things i can have the better because the more profit i can make um, so for me personally i guess to get to answering the actual question i'm i'm a fan of using it to craft stuff uh, i do have plans to acquire more corium recipes or recipes that use corium bars and other things that are made by corium bars so um and these things have a as you can see the profit on these is, is crazy it can be potentially amazing so the value generated by turning the Corium into an actual item to be sold, crafted item to be sold, that seems worth the time uh, that I might have to wait to actually sell the item. But hey, if you need the gold quicker and Corium is your kind of thing, uh, you'll notice that there's uh, quite a bit of Corium up on the auction. I see 20, 122 available in my realm currently. You can see all the people who have not listed. And you know that that you could interpret that as like, well, nobody's buying these, or uh, the market's just very healthy, and uh, honestly, I, th I believe that's the case because Corium is kind of a hot item. A lot of these items are fairly interesting to look at. One, other, one last thing I will note is it's probably worth uh, checking out how these things look, as we saw with uh, this one, this nice little Blood Elf is modeling it for us. This isn't terribly interesting, personally, uh, but you know, if we say look at the popular Veil Steel Longblade, we'll notice that, yeah, that's pretty cool. People are definitely going to want that. Again, I can tell you from experience, people people want that. All right, so there you go. That's that's the Corium or in bar conundrum that we have attempted to answer. It's going to do it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Andrew, and this has been a presentation of Dark Shore Capital's This Week in Gold Making. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video. I'm happy to answer it there. Or you can find me on Twitter at Dark Shore Cap. If you prefer to write to me, you can email me at darkshorecapital at gmail.com. Until next time, happy gold baking, and we'll see you in Battle for Azeroth.